But before we move to the third ingredient, we want to also uh, uh, revise a little bit why, where we left last week. So if you have your Bible with you, turn with me to the book of Daniel, chapter 1, verse 8 to verse 14. The Bible says in verse 8, but Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now, God has caused the official to show favor and sympathy. We spoke about favor last week, what it takes to, to have the favor of God and sympathy to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, verse 10, I'm afraid of my Lord, the king, who was assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other younger man your age? The king would have my hate because of you. Verse 11, Daniel then said to the God whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servant for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. It is uh, partial fasting, what was Daniel was asking. Then compare our appearance with that of a young man who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. Now, can you imagine what they serve you for the royalties, the royal food? You cannot imagine the banquet or the food they will serve. Now, Daniel had the choice to choose the food that uh, to eat from the king's table, royal food, special selected food for the kings and the prince, or to reject it so that he could please his God. That God will always will give us a choice to follow him or to follow our self-will. But when we follow him, there is blessing that follows. There is favor that follows. There is God's uh, you know, uh, uh, love and sympathy that follows. That's what the Bible says. So the, offic uh, the officers agreed to it now. We also want to read from verse 20 to verse 27. <clears throat> now, this is the dream that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had concerning the warning, the judgment uh, that was coming from God to him. Now, verse 20 says, the tree you saw which grew large and strong. This is the interpretation of the dream. Daniel is speaking. We just stopped touching the sky visible to the whole earth with beautiful leaves and abundant fruit, providing food for all, giving shelter to the beasts of the field, having nesting places in its branches for the birds of the air. You, king, are the tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reaches the sky and your dominion extends to distant part of the earth. Verse 23, you, king, saw a messenger, a holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, Cut down the tree and destroy it, but leave the stump bound with iron and bronze in the grass of the field while its roots remain in the ground. Let him be drenched with the dew of heaven. Let him live like the wild animal until seven times pass by for him. This is interpretation. So Daniel was interpreting from verse 24 to verse 27. Praise God. So we want to stop there. Praise God. Walking in God's favor blesses us and bring us into the favor of man. We must understand that when we have God's favor, it brings us and exposes us into the favor of man. When God's bless a favor upon us, we can stand before the prince, princess, upon the uh, most prominent people of, upon this world to speak. Praise God, the word of God, amen, because the gift and the talents will be placed through the favor of God. It is also will equip us to do his work. The primary purpose for God's favor it is not for self-purpose, uh, you know, the uh, fame, what we gain, or the monetary value that we gain, or that for our self, uh, you know, identity, but it is for the work of God. That must be the first one. We cannot misuse the favor of God. God is ever forgiving, ever loving. Uh, you know, God always forgives his people. His grace is always available to us. 
But, you know, we, we can, the Bible says, a righteous man falls seven times. And he get up. And he go back and God's grace always there. And then to forgive him. But there is something about misusing God's favor. And you'll find this when there are people who have misused God's favor for their self-purpose and gain. And many have fallen from the place. When they've fallen from the place of favor from God, it is difficult to get back God's confidence on that individual or on the person. So when God gives us the favor, we have to watch and we have to guard that favor very close to our heart. We cannot abuse it. And we have seen probably in our walk with God that many have misused the favor of God. Many have taken that and have placed it for their self-purpose. And it is very dangerous that we will misuse the favor of God for our self-purpose. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So when we look upon the two levels, Daniel approached the king. We read this now. There were two levels. Daniel began to approach the king. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8 to verse 14. It talks about a story that the way that Daniel approached the chief officer, he does not tell him arrogantly that God had told him to stay pure and the man better to not to resist God Almighty. But here the Bible talked about he humbled himself and appealed to the authority over him to seriously consider, amen, to consider that, even praise God, that um, uh, to allow. Daniel was pleading before the officer to allow himself to go into a fasting for 10 days. When you would read from verse 8 to verse 13. So here was Daniel was filled with not only with uh, wisdom, but also he humbled himself and is asking the officer just to give him, amen, praise God, uh, a time and a season to test for 10 days that if God will strengthen him, that God will be able to help him to walk in the place of a great favor and also his, his, where his countenance was changed completely. You can read this from verse 8 to verse 14. And uh, when he was allowed to be tested for 10 days, you know that the uh, outcome after the 10 days, the king found that, that Daniel and his three men were more fairer, more, more wiser. They were, they, they, they were more wiser than all the uh, wise men that were in that land. Amen. Praise God. But here the Bible talk about that Daniel humbly requests to the king, to the, to the officers, to allow him, that allow him to fast for 10 days and see whether that after 10 days that there will be any changes. Praise God. So God honors the, uh, subjects, the subjection of the spirit of Daniel to authority to allow them to test him for 10 days. Amen. Praise God. And also the second, uh, second uh, level that I spoke to, the second venue is when Nebuchadnezzar dream when God began to bring judgment to Nebuchadnezzar in verse 20 to verse 27. When you read there, before the judgment came, the word came to Nebuchadnezzar through a dream. And here was Nebuchadnezzar, uh, Nebuchadnezzar was troubled. And he called all the wise men, he called all the, you know, the soothsayers, all the, um, the warlords and those that are the magician, and they could not interpret. And then they remembered here was Daniel, a man that was greatly feared, uh, you know, by God and, and of God. And uh, the Bible talk about that uh, this Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, was equipped, amen, with the wisdom, with the knowledge of God. And he began to interpret the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. Here we talk about that here was Daniel was filled not only with wisdom, with humility, but also he humbled himself in his humbleness. Amen. Praise God. He came before Daniel and then he said, Oh Lord, in verse 20, he said, The dream that you have dreamed in verse 20 is a tree you saw, which large and strong, it stopped touching the sky, visible to the whole earth, with beautiful leaves and abundant fruit, providing food for all. So from verse 20 to 21, he described 
about the majesty of the tree. Verse 22, he talk about you are the tree. You have become great and strong. Your greatness has grown until it reached the sky and your dominion extend to distant part of the earth. So, O king, saw your messenger, the holy one, coming down from heaven and saying, cut down the tree. So here was the dream, the interpretation of the dream where the angel was sent to hew down or cut down the tree, the majestic the tree, and then the interpretation, Daniel amen, was filled with wisdom. At the same time, he had to deliver the warning, the message to the king Nebuchadnezzar. So he asked for God wisdom. And also he asked how that he can able to interpret. To one moment, if you read uh, carefully, the Bible say that in verse 27, uh, the Bible said Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar, was greatly perplexed. The word perplex means he was taken by anxiety and worry. He was over concerned how the king is going to accept the word that is going to come from him. Whether, uh, you know, it's going to be in the time of Moses, when Moses went before Pharaoh, if you know, the Pharaoh was so angry and passed judgment on Moses, even though Moses was born in the, in, in the house of Pharaoh. So Daniel was worried. He did not know what's going to happen to his future, but he need to obey. The Bible say obedient is better than sacrifice. When God has given something to us and, and, and uh, ask us to do something, praise God, we need to be faithful. When we are faithful in the small things, God will able to promote us to bigger things. You know that the Bible talked about Daniel was promoted to be the number two man in the whole dynasty of, uh, you know, of, of, of uh, Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. And that means a powerful man in the whole world. That promotion does not come easily for Daniel. The Bible talk about promotion does not come from the east or from the west, but it comes from the Lord. When, when you and I are seeking for promotion, we, when we are seeking for the approval, when we are seeking the favor of God, the number one ingredient is obedience. Obedience is in the, in, in the small thing as well as in the big things. The Bible talks about that he that is faithful in the small things, praise God. God is going to grant him great big things. So Daniel has to tell to the king as it is, but then he's praying for God to give him wisdom. He's praying that even uh, the, the king will accept what God is about to tell. So he's about to proclaim the judgment. He said, oh God, uh, oh King, God is about to bring the judgment to you. Amen. So, but look at the end results. Look at the end results in Daniel 4. Here was a tyrant. Here was, you know, a cruel king, a mighty cruel king. But look at in uh, verse 34, chapter uh, 4. And the end of the days, here was a pagan man, unbeliever. Nebuchadnezzar lifted up his eyes unto heaven. And he said, my eyes, my, eye, my understanding returned to me. And I blessed the most high and praised and honored him and liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. It tells me one thing, Daniel has been a great soul winner. Praise God. And to win this Nebuchadnezzar was not an easy task. It's not an easy task. You, know, you need God to be with you in order to turn a man like that to God, to ask him amen, to repent. Can you imagine if you read from verse 27? He's asking a pagan man a man that does not worship the God of Israel, he said, please accept my advice. Renounce your sin. That means repent your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness and being kind to the oppressed, that it may be then your blessing, your prosperity will continue. Here was Daniel was witnessing to a pagan uh, king about God and asking the, the king to come to his knees to repent. And through indeed, the king 
repented. And because of his repentance, God restored back his kingdom. Nevertheless, for seven years, you know, his judgment was he became like a, like a goat eating the grass. A king that was eating his own grass in his own palace. And, uh, you know, the people could not even recognize who the king was. He, he was made to walk on four legs on his hands and foot. Uh, that, that's how bad the judgment was. But God reduced the judgment from prolonging more than seven years through repentance. So this is a powerful soul winning concept that we can listen. It's either we can turn somebody to God with the truth or we can turn away somebody for the truth. You see, the truth, the word of God, it is like a two-edged sword. The Bible says, he that winneth soul is wise. Let him be wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. We either can win souls through with the truth that God has given to us, or we can turn away them with our boldness, with our zeal, if we lack wisdom. Let me tell you a story what happened. You know, I was attending a cell group for this many, many years ago. This, this young minister that was striving to start a, a, a cell group in his village, in, in his town, here in Malaysia, uh, no names mentioned. So over, over the period of 10 months, he was working very hard and people gathered slowly one after the other, people were coming. And after some time, there were about, you know, about 25 families, yet more than uh, 40 over people was coming to the cell group. And then when he was uh, 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 having these people, a lot of people from Catholic background, a lot of them from a different denomination, people do not know the truth, and they were there. So he was teaching Bible study at the same time he was uh, uh, having the cell group. And then one day he invited this uh, evangelist, this man to come. So out of boldness, this evangelist, okay, it's not from Malaysia, okay. So this evangelist came and then all of a sudden he began to speak about Acts 2.38. And, uh, you know, it, it was very bold, but he lacked wisdom and he began to preach on that. And when he spoke on that without much wisdom, he turned away all the 30 over people that were attending from bringing them into the salvation plan. Plan in, End of the session, everybody was go, got so upset. They got so, you know, uh, with the way that he shed because it was very judgmental, judging all of them going to hell if they're not baptized in the name of Jesus. You see, um, yeah, we need to present the truth. We have been given the accountability to preach the truth, but there are time, there are season, and we need to apply the wisdom of God correctly at the time. If we miss the timing and we miss God's timing and the conviction of God, we can miss the whole point. And because of that, you know, that whole cell group has to close down in a couple of months because of the, uh, the blunt decision of this man made at the cell group. I'm not telling not to present the truth. The truth is so important. We need to present because that is the only way of salvation to the kingdom. And we are accountable to present, but we need to apply the truth with wisdom and tactfulness. Praise God. There are times and seasons that we need to present when people are, are convicted, they are ready. We need to present the truth there and there, like Nicodemus that came to Jesus. He's ready to get baptized. He's ready to be filled with the Holy Ghost at that point. But there are places where people need to take into a journey where we need to teach the Bible study, where we need to talk to them. I, I taught the, the Living Logos, uh, you know, the, uh, the my father's house. Many times when we go into the fifth lesson, the sixth lesson, we talk about salvation plan, baptism. The people will stop and say, now what we must do? I've been baptized like this, in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Ghost, but I've not been baptized like what the Bible is talking about. And then that is a point that we tell them, now this is the only way of salvation. Do you want to obey God or you want to obey the word of God? So we leave the choice to them. And when they say, I want to obey the words of God, 
Then the next step is gently to draw them to the water. Say, if you are ready, we can baptize you today or tomorrow. Praise God. Gently lead them to the waters through the wisdom of God. So we can apply this. There are two different points. People are ready when the conviction are high, but in, the, in some places that we need to take them and then teach them the word of God step by step. And we need to be sensitive to them and sensitive to the word of God. Amen. So there is a, this is a thing that we can learn through the life of Daniel. So Daniel was tactful. He is, is a humble man and he had the wisdom of God to apply. Praise God. Praise God. So we have seen the two characteristics of a person of influence. We, we, we all want to be a people of godly influence, whether it be in our home, to be a godly influence to our children, whether in our work, amen, to, uh, to be a godly influence. Amen. Another story I want to tell you, in a Muslim nation, there was this missionary, uh, you know, they were called there to be Amos. So what happened, uh, they're not supposed to preach there. They were brought there as a teachers to the nation and they were being a teachers in that nation. So they were living there as teachers and then the husband and wife and the, so that they can do the work of the missionary. So what happened, the news got out uh, in, in the school that, you know, that uh, they were Christians. And uh, what happened during the, uh, the staff uh, meeting, one of the teachers, Muslim, asked this missionary why we heard that you are Christians, can you please share with, with us uh, you know, how to become Christian? So without discernment, without the wisdom, she began to share to this uh, another Muslim teacher about you know, Jesus Christ being the true one God, he's the only way of salvation, need to be baptized. And when they have, uh, when she have done it, the whole uh, witness has been uh, recorded and then later they took her and charged her. And, uh, you know, and the punishment was they deported her from the country. They could not come back to the nation as a missionary because of bluntly uh, she was, she did not apply wisdom. So God wants us to be wise. That's what the Bible says. We need to be wise as a serpent and to be not to be, you know, to be wise as a serpent and also to be harmless as a dove, when we win so, praise God. It is very important. It's a very important principle for every child of God. It is from the uh, lowest level as a saint to the highest level of a being a preacher. Praise God. So now let's continue to the third ingredient. The third ingredient that we want to discuss today is confidence. What is confidence? Confidence means simply means faith in God. Praise God. I want to read from Daniel chapter 3, from verse 8 to verse 12. If you have your Bible, I want you to read from verse 8 to verse 12. It was then that some Babylonians took the opportunity to denounce the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, May your majesty live forever. Your majesty had issued an order that as soon as the music starts, everybody is to bow down and worship the gold statue. And that anyone who does not bow down and worship it to be thrown into a blazing furnace. There was some Jew whom you put in charge of the province. So these are ministers, highest position. Uh, you know, they were ministers, they were mayors. Their name was Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego, who are disobeying your majesty orders. They do not worship your God and bow down to the statue you set up. So... When the king put up a, a statue, a high statue, and they said everybody need to bow down to the statue, here was uh, three of them, Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego, refused to bow down to uh, this uh, uh, statue. And, and uh, their act brought the news to the king, and the king was so angry. Praise God. You know, what it tells us is that they had the faith that God would deliver them when whatever they go through. When we are obedient to God, when we are faithful to God, when we are covered under the covering of God, be assured that when you walk through the fire, he will be there for you. 
When you walk through the water, he will be with you. When you go through the, the lion's den, the lion will not eat you up. No, the devils can able to attack you because you are under the covering and the protection of God. There are two things. We can be so folly and fall into our own, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, sin and unrighteousness, tempting God and take away the covering of God from our life and blame God. Or we can be solely obedient to God and under the protection of God and trust God and have faith in God. And when you are faithful in God, in all things, you, you, you can be assured beyond anything. He will be there for you when you go through the fire, when you go through trouble, when you go through, you know, a great persecution, great trouble. That's why David said, a great king, I have not seen, amen, the, the, the people begging for bread. I've not seen people are begging for bread. I've not seen those that have been faithful, that have been forgotten by God. God remembers them. God comes for them. Even at the 11th hour, God's come for them. This was that. Sometimes life is so, so unpredictable. There are ups and downs. It is easy to live for God when we are up, everything goes up. When there are finances, there are money, there are, you know, uh, a, a favor, there are jobs. You know, uh, everybody uh, can trust God. Many of us want to trust God. When the times are good, one preacher said, when he was going through a difficult time, another preacher came and said, how can you can still worship and praise God? When you are down, there is nothing left. Your wife had died, your children had died, you have nothing, you are in the street. He said, God forbid if I worship and praise him when I was doing good and when I'm not doing good, God forbid that I do not worship him. I will worship him in good time and I will worship him in bad time. I will live for him in bad time and I will live, uh, live for him in good times. Praise God. And God sometime will test and try our faithfulness. Praise God. Many of us want to trust God. When times are good, it, it can feel easier. But times can be feel difficult. When our children go through difficulty, when one of our children backslide, when maybe some sickness come to us or to our spouse, life can be going along smoothly for a season. Everything might be good. I mean, the time when our job is threatened, when our finances are threatened, maybe our friends, you know, that are with us, they will forsake us and leave us. Then all of a sudden, life throws us in a curveball. Someone, you know, gets sick in the family. The loved ones just pass away. We lose our job. We lose our finances. A member, a family, or someone that close to us betrays us. The things that you feel secure all of a sudden is shaky and sudden. How do we trust God in these circumstances? How do we trust God when we don't understand what is going to happen next, when we cannot see the end results? Praise God. God is watching over to see that we will be the people of God, whether we will be faithful in all times, in good times, in bad times, in our joyfulness, in our tears, in weariness. You know, you know, verse 19 to 24, 25, you read, then Nebuchadnezzar lost his temper and his face turned red with anger to these three Hebrew children. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual. And he commanded the strongest men in the army to tie the three men and throw them into the blazing furnace. Verse 22, because the king had given strict orders for the furnace to be made extremely hot, the flames burn up the guards who took them to the furnace. Verse 24, then suddenly, when Nebuchadnezzar lifted up his countenance, he saw in amazement, and he asked his, his official, don't we tie up three men and throw them into a blazing furnace? He said, yes. They said, yes, Lord. Yes, majesty. Then in verse 25, he said, why do I see four men walking around the fire? He said, how come I see a fourth figure like the sun of man. Praise God. When you walk through the fire for God, you will not be alone. When you are being tempted, when you are persecuted, when, when you go through the trials, you will not be alone. God will be there for you. 
praise God. Can we lift our hands and just thank the Lord for the faithfulness? How many times can you testify that God has been for you? Take some time right now. Just thank him right now. Father, we want to thank you for being there for us, Lord, for our family, for our children. Lord, when we are low, when God, there is no more strength left, when Jesus, everybody forsakes us, when people judge us wrongly, Lord, when God, when things are going lowly and we cannot trust anyone, you were there for us in times of trouble, Lord. We cannot thank you enough, Jesus Christ. We worship you and magnify you for your faithfulness, Lord. I thank you for the faith of your people who trust you in all times. Even in this time of pandemic, Lord, I want to thank you for the faithfulness, Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord, for the faithfulness of your people, Father, that you have given to us, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, thank you, Father. Now, faith is spelled in two ways. One is faithfulness. Number two, faith to see miraculous. We'll discuss both of these. So when, you know, verse 26, the Bible says, Nebuchadnezzar went himself to the finances, and then he called out to the three Hebrew children. He said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You read verse 26. He said, now he called them, not only just any person. He said, servants of the supreme God. Come out. Then they came out. All the princes, governors, lieutenants, governors, and all officials. Everybody was gathering to look on the three men. Look at the testimony in the land of Babylon. They don't have to preach the gospel. They don't have to preach the gospel. God is one. When God showed up in the life of these three Hebrew children, that was the testimony. That was a seal. That to show that there's one God, praise God, that was, amen, that was among the three Hebrew children. Sometime through your testimony, your testimony can speak louder than any words. Your testimony can be a fire in your life to draw people to ask of you, what it is so different about you? What it is so different about the way that you speak, you live, your family? Everything about you. They wanted to find out what is so different about you. Amen. Praise God. And verse 28, he said, the king said, praise the God. Now he's worshiping God. Praise the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He did not know he was the same God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. But he is now worshiping this God, this pagan man. He said he sent his angel to rescue this man and serve them. And now he decreeing in verse 29, he said, if anyone, I command, if anyone, any nation, race, or language speak disrespectfully of God, of Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, he be torn limb to limb, and his house be made pile of ruins. There is no other God who can rescue like this. And the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, higher position in the province of Babylon. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Promotion come from the Lord. It takes faithfulness, faithfulness from the day one the Lord finds you until today. We may fall, we may uh, do wrong, a small thing. Just like the Bible say, a righteous man will fall, but he will get up and say, here goes number eight. Here goes number 10. I'm still going to stand on my feet and I'm still going to be faithful to my God. I'm not going to compromise my values, my value system, I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to sell myself the values that God has given to me to the devil. Amen. You know, if you remember, Pastor Leah was telling uh, some time ago about, you know, when the, uh, 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 this Jezebel's husband that came to buy the, the pot of land from, you know, from, from um, in that place, the owner said, the land is not for sale. We can tell right now to the devil, I'm not for sale. My valley is not for sale. My family is not for sale. My conviction for God is not for sale. We can tell to the devil, praise God, I'm being bought by the blood of the lamb 
and it is until the day of redemption. Praise God. A very popular, a very powerful, powerful man of God in America told me this, this story. Praise God of being faithfulness to God. He said one day he was op uh, having an you know, open uh, crusade meeting in America. And he, when he was young, he was having this meeting. What happened was um, there used to uh, uh, a big limousine, a very, very powerful rich man walking to his uh, camp crusade and he accepted the Lord. And uh, he saw this, uh, this, this evangelist, this powerful man of God, you know, a uh, uh, good orator. He was powerfully been used by God. After a few sessions, he came up and said, I want you to follow me and I will make you the greatest actor in all Hollywood. If only you will walk out from this place, I will give you everything. All the fame, the money, I will give you everything you need. All you have to do is just come with me and you don't have to preach and be a pastor or be an evangelist, just follow with me. This evangelist looked to him and he said, I can trade anything, but I cannot trade my savior. I can give up anything, but I cannot give up my savior and I cannot give up my conviction. And at the corner of his eyes, he was looking to this man at the corner of his eyes. As he was speaking, he saw as though the master, the Lord was standing just right next to him, watching him, what would his answer will be? If he would compromise and take a step and follow with this, this great billionaire that is offering him, or would stand to be nobody and preach the gospel for him. And when the, he refused to follow, Praise God. The favor of God followed this man. Praise God. Many of you, you know, if I speak to him, Brother, brother Barnes, J.W. T.W. Barnes, powerfully been used to raise up many, many apostles all throughout America. Praise God. It took him, praise God, to pay a price in order to him to have the favor of God, to say no to the devil and say yes to God. Praise God. Sometimes the favor of God, the commitment of God, Come with a price tag. People ask us sometimes, what does it take? It takes everything. It takes everything, everything to pay the price to follow after Jesus Christ. It takes a cross. The cross is not light. It is a heavy, heavy cross for us to carry. But the price will be worth it because the end of the journey, the crown of righteousness is nothing compared to what this world can give you, to what anything or the devil can give you. Praise God. Praise God. Daniel's own life was put to test. In chapter 1, Daniel was, was confident that God would work out in his behalf. He was willing that his suggestion to be put in, in, in test. What if he suggested something that it would turn against him? What would cause, it might cost him and his favor with, uh, when he spoke to the king, faith in God is a third-legged stool that anyone can sit confidently. Praise God. Praise God. When we look in the, the early church, they walked in the faith of God, not only being faithful, but in faith. I may be passionate about a cause. I may be sensitive of in how to proceed toward the cause. But if I'm unwilling to act in faith, very little will happen. The early church turned the world upside down. It is not only through their faithfulness, but they didn't do it. Coving down in some safe corner, they went forth everywhere preaching the gospel. They were a living testimony. Look at the favor of God that followed on them. When they preach the word of God, the Bible says the Lord working with them, confirming every word they preach. Look in the life of Esther, in the book of Esther, when she went before King Xerxes and asked him to reverse Haman's evil plan. It took her own life. Look at the life of Nehemiah to go before the king to ask permission to build the walls of Jerusalem. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. We need to be faithful to God. When we are faithful to God, 
then we are able to believe and go the extra mile to believe that God will come to our aid, to have faith in God, to have faith that God will not reject us when we are in time of need. If you remember the, the, the woman that came to Jesus Christ and was begging, begging for bread, the woman, the Bible says, the woman that begged for bread at the table of Jesus, here was a parable that Jesus spoke about. A story that Jesus talked about. And this woman was from the land of Samaria. And when she came, her daughter was not well. She could have come there and she could ask. She said that he's the only one who can heal my daughter. He's the only one who has the answer. But then when the Lord refused to heal the daughter and said, I'm not sent to the house except for the house of Israel. He said, I'm not called to the house of the pagan or the Gentile. She refused to let go the faith. People of God, we need to have the faith to go the extra mile for God. When everything seems not all right, we need to put on the shoes of faith to believe God to come in. She began to push forward. She said, yes, Lord but I'm not going to go from this place unless until you hear my cry. And then uh, she began to say, she said, just give me a little bit, just a little bit of miracle, just a little bit that, that you can do, that you have done for all these people. She's, and, and then Jesus said, it's not right to take the bread from the children's hand and, and cast it to the dogs. Can you imagine to that extent that she was being tested Sometimes God will test us in the point, but she pushed forward. She said, this is where my faith has been tried, but I'm not going to leave this place without a miracle. She said, yes, Lord, I could be a dog, but I still need a crumb. I don't need the whole bread, but just give me a little crumb that fall from your table. And when the Lord saw the faith of that woman, he was moved with compassion. He was moved to touch and send the word to the daughter that she will be all right. That is the kind of faith that God is looking for his people. If you want to walk in the supernatural power in the hand of God, it takes the extraordinary than the ordinary. It takes the supernatural than the natural. It takes faith than just to be in the place of ordinary. It takes people that wants to go the extra mile and to believe, and there is a price for us to pay. Amen. It, takes, it took faith for Daniel. You know, when, when you would read in, a, in, a, in, in a, the book of Daniel, when the, they decreed that nobody should pray for a season of time, it took faith in Daniel to open his windows and continue to pray. He was 90 years old. He's no longer 19 or 20 years old to face all the uh, persecution and the trouble. He's an old man right now, but his faithfulness when he was young showed up when he was 90 years old. When we have character, character is more powerful than gifts and talents. When we have character, the character will follow us until we go to the grave. When, when we have taken hold of the character of God, the fruit of the Spirit of God, that character will, will, will mold us and build us and bring us to the, our destiny. Amen. Praise God. At the age of 90, we can see the faithfulness of Daniel opening up that window and begin to pray three times a day. Praise God. At the age of 90 years old, he might have been tempting to seek peace and said, I'm going to just take it easy. I'm just going to simply comply to the king's decree. But Daniel knew that if he would obey God, God would take care of him. Prayer was always been a vital part of Daniel's life. And it was an essential to his influence to others. Praise God. Praise God. He'd rather choose to obey and to, be, to follow his conviction and to his commitment to God than to give in to the pressure of life. We all have to go through the pressure. 
pressure. We spoke about it last week. Pressure from, you know, our employers sometimes. Uh, pressure from our workplace. But when God is for us, who can be against us? When God works us in our favor, when we are walking in the ordinance of God, when God is covering us in his hand, he will open the doors for us to escape when we are tempted. Praise God. God will not allow us to go through our temptation beyond what we can bear. Amen. Praise God. And you know the story the Bible talked about in Daniel chapter 6 when you read that. Because he was faithful to his, his God, they throw him in, de- in, in, the, in the lion's den. In the midnight hour when he was thrown, God sent his angels. Praise God. Powerful, mighty angels. While Daniel was resting in the stomach of the lion, King Darius was in trouble because he was his good friend. He could not sleep the whole night. You read the words he the, the sleep left him. He could not sleep until the next morning, six in the morning. He ran to the lion's den, opened the lion's den and looked for Daniel. And when he saw Daniel was lying and he was having a good night's sleep, praise God, it brought great joy to Darius. And you know that God was with Daniel. Praise God. Praise God. People of God. God wants us to be godly influence, not only in our words, in our action, in our commitment, in our, in our walk with God from day one. Sometimes we may think that, you know, the man of God is not there, the pastor is not there, the leaders is not there. You know, our friends is not there to watch over us. Nobody is there. Nobody is watching us. But you know what? There is, when the time that we are born again, we are a child of God. The Bible said that we are written in the palm of God. We are the apple of his eye. And that's why the Bible says in the book of Revelation, God assigned his angel over every believer. Not only one, there are two angels that God assigned for each and every one of you. We might be afraid of the devil when there is one demon that is trying to tempt you. There are two angels that are fighting for you. That are standing in the in, you know around you and camped around you. Amen. Praise God. That's what Elijah said when they came to capture Elisha and said, Elijah, you need to go with us. When the Shirin pagan king brought that 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 uh, you know huge army to take, Elijah was confident in his God. And when the servant went forth and he was afraid and terrified, Elisha prayed and said, God opened up his eyes that he may see what's beyond the unseen world. And when his eyes opened, he saw there were great army of angels that had come and camped around Elijah. Praise God. And then Elijah said, he that is with us is more than with them. When God is for us, he sent a great army of angels of hosts to protect you, to watch over you, to guard you. But he expects his people to be faithful, to be faithful in everything. And when you walk in faithfulness, praise God, you can walk in faith, expecting God to do great things. Praise God. There are levels of faith. When God takes you from the small little faith, a, a faith that grows from a mustard seed to a mountain, there are levels of different faith. When God gives you the small faith, don't question God. Don't turn that, that, that challenge and say, why God put me into this test? But prove that you can able to come through the testing with flying colors. Then you come through to another test. And then you prove that your faith now is bigger to believe God for bigger things. And then you believe God for bigger things. And then you believe God for bigger things. But without there will, not, there will not be a testimony without a test. You must understand that when we are, we are put through a test, there will be a testimony. And God will elevate you, promote you. And then that's why you see all these great men of God that are seeing all the supernatural, mighty, powerful demonstration, power of God. It doesn't come to them just like that in one day. There are times, there are seasons, there are process, there are levels. That God led them to walk from one level, but there has been an opening 
beginning from them to walk from the day one when God put you in the test. Maybe some of us have failed in the test, but we need to go back to God and say, God, put me in the test again. Try me again one more time, Lord. I want to prove that I'm able to come through in the test, the test of faith. When God puts you in the test and watch you, how are you going to overcome that? When you overcome, there's going to be something bigger. And when you grow into something bigger, God is going to anoint you. The anointing is going to grow with your, with your faith. When you walk through another door of faith, your anointing is going to grow bigger. When you walk through into greater things, your anointing is going to grow bigger. That's how that you're going to grow from one level to another level of a great walk in the supernatural. Godly influence. It all tie up together. Praise God. To believe God to provide. To, to believe God to do the supernatural. To believe God to do great miracles. To believe God to bring the great harvest of things. Like in the days of apostles. It takes a process. It takes a child of God. It takes a man of God. It takes a woman of God. Praise God. To place in the hand of God like a seed. And let the seed grow. Let the seed grow. Let the seed grow. Like in the time of Daniel. Praise God. Mm -hmm.